I'm Adrix. Today we're going to look at how are you going to do this experiment and you're going to probably do it for marks that's going to come really a lot of your total marks for the year. So pay attention and really make sure that you have everything perfect when you write up your experiment. Alright, so what we have to prove here. So the whole goal of our experiment is to say would the total linear momentum during a collision, would it be conserved, would it stay the same or not? Alright, so how are we going to do this experiment? What we're going to do is, in most of your schools, you, you're going to have either a very modern um, apparatus to work with, where it slides almost with no resistance, which is important because what is the law stating? that it would stay constant if it is in a closed system. So no external forces. But of course, most of our schools don't have that kind of apparatus. So we just, I'm just going to show it to you how you would do it with that normal trolleys that we have used also last year in grade 11 for Newton's second law. Alright, so what we're going to do is, on the tables, or your benches at school, you're going to build, a, let's say, put a plank over here, tie it with something that it stands up straight, a plank over here. Then what we're going to use is we're going to use the trolleys, and I don't know if you can remember how they look like, but they are quite old-fashioned, doesn't matter, still works, still works, and it's got something in here that you could trigger pull back so that the moment you hit on that lot at the, at the top, this thing just shoots out and it could of course uh, you be used as to create an explosion. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the two trolleys lined up for an explosion like this and we're going to pull that pin back and this one as well so that they in. And the moment we're going to hit on one of the two, that pen is just going to shoot out and it's going to create the two trolleys to move apart from each other in an explosion. So it's going to be standing still before, we're going to hit on it and it's going to shoot apart from each other and of course hit the edge of our planks there. Now, just to make it interesting, let's double the mass of the trolley, let's call this trolley A. And let's double this one by putting another trolley on top of it. So let's call this system trolley B. You can just use elastic to tie them together. And of course, before you start, you have to weigh the mass. So you're going to weigh trolley A's mass. Let's say that's 1,2 kilograms. And if it's double that size, it's going to be 2,4 kilograms for trolley B. Now, you have to, of course, repeat this a, 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 a few times. Now, what happens is, if you've got them lined up like this, it's going to hit on the trolley, it's going to start running apart from each other and hit the edges of the flags over there. So, what did you get? Which trolley would hit first? Of course, the lighter one. Alright, so trolley A would push, shoot up and hit you first, that one was double the mass, would of course go slower and then hit that side. So what you basically hear is dush dush. Okay, so you hit on the trolleys, they shoot apart and you hit dush dush. Alright? So you've got the mass, but now we need the velocity. Now you could either do it with using a ticket timer, but with me, with our school, what we do is we kind of like I don't say cheat, but there's a trick to this. So what we do is we move the true trolleys until you don't hear tush tush, but you just work bam. They hit at the same time. Because if they hit at the same time, that means that the time for the trolley A to travel equals the time for trolley B to travel. And if that is the case, 
we can cancel T out completely. Okay, let's have a look. So what happens is, of course, I can't start with them in the middle. So you have to repeat it a few times, move the trolleys along, until you hear that tush, they hit the same time, both the plants. That would probably be something like this. So not right in the center, but you move them along until you get to the point where when they shoot away from each other, hit at the same time, hit at the same time. So your time for both is a constant. Why would we want to do that? Because then we don't have to measure the time. And then the time measurement can't be faulty. You see? So, how are we going to then measure the velocity? We know from grade 10 already that we can measure velocity by the distance traveled of whatever divided by the time it used to travel that certain distance. Now, if we want to work out the velocity for trolley A, that means that we measure from there to there. Let's say it is, I don't know, 100 centimeters, so comma 1 meter. Now, remember, my time is a constant. So, what happens is we're going to then use our displacement or the distance that we measure there as if it is our velocity. Although it won't be the same numerical value, but because it gets divided, because in this case, if I work now out the velocity of P, so it would be again my displacement divided by my time, although my time in both these circumstances are the same, it can cancel out, and I'm just going to measure and let's say I measure this to comma 5, oh sorry, not comma 5, comma 0 0,5 meters. So let's say that one is 50 centimeters, this one is 100 centimeters. So we're going to then, of course, change, um, get the right unit, change it over to meters, and that is what you're going to do. So now you've got your values. And so your method would be just write your method up correctly with not bullet points, but number one do this, number two do this, number three do this. You'll see it in my notes that I'm going to add at the end of this video. Then of course the second part would now be where we have our data in a table. And of course you always have you have to say it's a table of the data measured of two trolleys in an explosion, what, what, what. But you do have to have something there to get your mark for that. Then what we're going to do using our table is we're going to say, all right, let's say this is everything before, and that would be after. So we're going to have mass of trolley A, mass of trolley B, that's before. Then we're going to have velocity of trolley A initial, velocity of trolley A final, velocity of trolley B initial, velocity of trolley um, B final, and then we're going to have our total momentum of trolley A, momentum of trolley B. So it depends on how your school wants to do it. You have to ask your teacher, is it necessary to have all of this separately or can you just have your total momentum? But rather have too many data in your table than too, too, uh, too few data because then you're going to lose marks. All right, so Trolley, mass of trolley A, 1,2, mass of trolley B, 2,4. Velocity of, of A, initial, 0, of A, final, and that's where you're going to have to work that out. Now, you know that we have to have our units on top in our table. So, there it's mass in kilogram, velocity in meters per second, velocity in meters per second, 
velocity meters per second, meters per second, and the momentum kilogram meters per second. All right, and now you're going to complete this. So your initial velocity of both A and B, B initial, is zero. All right, so we're going to work out what was our initial velocity of A, our uh, initial momentum of A, it was zero. M initial momentum of B, it was zero. So I think keep, yeah, wait, 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 keep the finals. Sorry, let me just redo that. Don't want to confuse you. So let's say we have velocity B, initial, also zero. So what would be my momentum B equals mass mole times that of A, initial, that would then also be zero, and we've got the total momentum of B, and that would also be N times, would also be zero. And I would still continue then to say, okay, what is this, the sum of momentum of A plus momentum of B, and because it was still, it would still be zero. So all of this would be the total momentum or the momentum before the explosion. And then I would have a similar table like this, where I have momentum after the explosion. And then I would of course have again my same mass values, but then my velocity equals my displacement. Even though it states meters per second, you can compete, compete it in there. Then you have your velocity of B, again measure that there. So in this case, let's have a look. It would then be my velocity, I would have measured it as comma zero, velocity of B. Now remember, choose a direction as your positive or negative. So if I choose direction of A, that would be 0, 0,1 plus. If B is in the opposite direction, uh, sorry, B would be a plus, and then A would be the opposite direction, so minus 0, 0,1, then B would be plus 0, 0,05. And if I then would work out what is the momentum before, so now I'm just going to work that out. Let's do that. Now, these measurements, of course, are going to be different from yours. Okay, so don't use my measurements, you're going to be using yours. So I'm going to say, okay, for the total momentum of A initial, it's a final. Yeah, I now completed it for after. So now it's not initial anymore, it's final. So it's now my second table. So I'm going to work out what is my initial, it's 1,2 of A times A's velocity of 0, 0,1, that gives me a minus 0, 0,12 kilograms meters per second, just have your units in top here as well. And then I'm going to work out what is the total momentum of B, so B would be then the mass of B, 2,4 times, um, what do we have there? And 0, 0,5 and that equals plus 0, 0,12. Of course I cheated. <laughs> uh, but you have to use your real results. And then you would see that the total sum of your momentum of A plus momentum of B equals then again 0. And then with your analysis, so this is your table of data, so that's all your data. Then you're going to have two tables, one for before the explosion, one for after the explosion. And then of course with your analysis, now you're going to say, okay, if you look at that, then you're going to say, okay, my total, my total, the sum of my total momentum before equals zero kilogram meters per second because it was standing still. And the sum of my total momentum after, and then you're going to work it out, so it's your momentum final, 
of A plus momentum final of B. Put your numbers in there and it equals again 0 kilogram meters per second. Therefore, you can make the conclusion that this, the total linear momentum in a closed system stays constant. So it's quite an easy practical to do where you don't, just don't lose marks by not having, for instance, um, the right way of writer for your experiment. But I'm going to add my notes to the end of this and then you could use that. If your school does use a different method, basically the same thing, you're just going to work out, work with all your measurements, work out the total momentum before and it should be equal to that after. Of course, now you could bring it, if you would not get a complete zero, like I did because I cheated, then of course you could bring in, there could be factors involved, like friction on the table, or air friction, or uh, maybe you have measured the time incorrect, if you didn't cheat like we did. So, a question here, of course you have to be careful, is that the velocity is not exactly the displacement but it equals the displacement value because it gets divided by a same constant in both trolley A and both trolley B. So I hope this was of a help. Believe in yourself, get your marks for this practical. Take care.